How's it going, everyone? My name is Token, and today I'm back with a brand new series for you all as we are starting a VGC analysis series on the channel where we'll be breaking down, evaluating, and in-depthly going over how certain Pokemon in the VGC meta are currently doing or how they're doing as well as they currently are. So I'm extremely excited to get underway with this series. I hope you guys are as well, and I just appreciate you guys viewing today's video. So if you find this video helpful, if you find it entertaining, or if you just want to spread the information provided in the video, please, please, I urge you to like and share the videos that go so far with uh, supporting the channel, as well as subscribe to the channel if you are new for more videos of the same kind, as well as can BGC battle videos and more competitive Pokemon in general. Who's that Pokemon? It's Snorlax! To kick start this series, I thought there would be no better Pokemon to evaluate than Snorlax. Since Generation 1, Snorlax has been my favorite normal type Pokemon, and probably one of my favorite Pokemon in general, especially after seeing his personality in that television show. <laughs> Chow down, Snorlax. Looks like you got a case of the munchies. Look, it's eating the thorns. Thorns are Snorlax's favorite snack item. Snorlax hunger isn't satisfied until it consumes 900 pounds of food. Then it goes back to sleep. B back to sleep! Well, let's move on to Snorlax competitively. Snorlax, especially as of late, has been on a tear in the North American beauty scene. Snorlax was on three of the top four Mexico regionals team, re regionals finishing teams, which, uh, wrapped up in earlier June, and it also finished North American Internationals on four of the five top teams and was also on three of those top finishing teams. So that just shows like what Snorlax is doing, what it's accomplishing, how good it is, how much it's supporting its teams, and then it also shows what more it can possibly do as um, there's just there's so much there, like what better time to be doing this well than going right into Worlds. Perfect time for a Pokemon to be showing and shredding its best going right into Worlds. Even though Snorlax hasn't seen the same usage and success outside of North America and most of the 2017 metagame, I don't think anyone would be surprised if Snorlax had a big day in Worlds at Hanaheim. Like, I could easily see it happening considering how, how much how much of a headache this Pokemon can cause, how much I was seeing it already cause in those games that it had um, in North America Internationals. I didn't start playing VGC until 2015, so to see Snorlax be the powerhouse it is currently in the VGC 2017 metagame is quite the sight to behold. So what makes this Pokemon so good at what it does? What makes the Sleepy Giant so threatening? Let's hop right into breaking down Snorlax as a competitive Pokemon by taking a gander at its base stats first and foremost. Snorlax is the beneficiary of a whopping 450 base stat total, BST. That is insane and that is gigantic for a non-legendary Pokemon. So that is, that is just absolutely insane and it kind of gives you already some preliminary ideas of why this Pokemon is so good at what it does. But there's so much more to come. With its enorm enormous HP stat of 160, backed with a base 110 attack and special defense, Snorlax is able to tank many special attacks while putting on tons of offensive pressure. That's exactly how this Pokemon functions. But nevertheless, do not forget, as much as it can be a hinder sometimes, it's also its greatest benefit, um, largely, in the fact that Snorlax is extremely slow. It's very, very slow. So Snorlax's very slow stat, very slow stat is a, allows it to be a solid Trick Room attacker or answer to other Trick Room teams or pretty much check to other Trick Room teams. So now let's move a little bit more into its typing which is also something that really helps it. Snorlax is further benefited by its normal typing granting it, granting it few weaknesses offensively, few resistances offensively, and only one weakness defensively. Due to Snorlax's only weakness in fighting facing many difficulties in VGC 2017 and due to the general lack of solid fighting coverage moves on viable Pokemon, Snorlax is extremely hard to damage significantly more often than not. And it's true, a lot of the Pokemon that's, a lot of the fighting types in this meta just aren't really there due to fairies in a sense, but they also have other stuff that hinder them a lot. And I feel like the main thing is Arcanine. Pheromones and Bustle, some of the main fighting types you might see, 
They both don't want to see Arcanine. Pheromos is kind of figuring its matchup with Arcanine out a little bit more by uh, being able to go for Z Focus Blast and O coin it. But then that leaves the way, if Arcanine's next to Snorlax, that leaves the way for, Ar for Snorlax to then, if you predict that, then Snorlax can just go for return and bring uh, Pheromosa down. Uh, knock, I think it actually needs to boost if it's not an offensive one, but it could possibly knock Pheromosa out as Pheromosa is extremely frail. So having to run a Z-move rather than a Sash definitely comes at a price of um, not being able to live one hit no matter what with Pheromosa. And then uh, Buzzhole is just, Buzzhole is going to be slower than Arcanine, but due to its enormous defensive stat, it can also take out a flare, tank out of Flare Blitz. But um, Buzzhole just really doesn't want its attack lowered and then still try and do out a lot of do out a lot of damage. Arcanine just really puts a lot of pressure on both of those two. And then you look at Kartana as well. And Kartana has the fighting coverage in Sacred Sword and it also bypasses stat boost. So that's really nice. However, though, Arcanine also puts a lot of pressure on Kartana, and Arcanine is currently the most used Pokemon in VGC 2017, so you kind of see how Snorlax was able to put its little nest in the VGC 17 scene and kind of sit there, considering that it can be very easily supported by its team members. Let's transition, though, into Snorlax's ability, items, and useful moves. What really makes Snorlax as good as it is, it's its... It's the combination of the ability Gluttony, the boost Pinch Berries received in Generation 7, and Snorlax's access to many solid setup options. They all are what make it into what it is. And Snorlax couldn't have benefited more from the boost Pinch Berries got. So, we'll go more into depth about that. Gluttony allows Snorlax to consume Pinch Berries at 50% or less, which is a huge deal considering many Pinch Berries in Generation 7 received a buff where they now restore half your max HP, but only at one-fourth of your maximum HP, unless you have the ability Gluttony, and that's exactly what Snorlax has to its disposal. So typically, if you're using a Pinch Berry like an Aqua Berry, you wouldn't receive the half health from an Aqua Berry until you're at 25% of your full health or less. However, if you're Snorlax, you have Gluttony and you receive that Pinch Berry's usage at 50% or less, which allows you to stay so much more healthy and which makes you so much harder to deal with than your typically Pinch Berry user. So pretty much Snorlax is the number one like Alolan Muck also has Gluttony and it benefits too, but I feel like Snorlax is the number one benef beneficiary of the boost that Pinch Berries received in Generation 7. Considering this final note is the fact that you have to factor in, Snorlax actually gets access to a move Recycle, which restores the item the user last used. So you have a Pokemon that's just eating berries and restoring its health all game. Because Recycle pretty much what it does is if you get hit below 50%, you eat your Figgy Berry with Snorlax, then you go for, you get back to 90%, then you go for Recycle, and now you have that berry again, so you're ready to take damage to go back below 50% once again. So that can make Snorlax just so annoying to deal with, and it can make it just literally just sit there and set up and deal, get damage dealt, and then just restore it back as it goes for Recycle. Alolan Muck doesn't get access to Recycle, so that's why I feel Snorlax benefited the most from Pinch Berries in this generation. So now let's discuss some of the viable moves that Snorlax has to its disposal and what it typically uses. Offensively, Snorlax typically only runs Return and High Horsepower. It usually doesn't need anything more. Return allows it, to, allows it to hit pretty much almost all of the metagame for neutral damage and extremely hard if it already has boost of some sort from setup. However, there are a few Pokemon who resist this, and some Steel types, mainly Kartana, and then also Gigalith, and a Rock type, pretty much the only viable Rock type. However, Snorlax still does so much damage and everything that it's usually not worthwhile to not just go with these two moves and then try to support it adequately so that it can have, it doesn't need to cover any other coverage. As sometimes people do choose to run Wild Charge so that they can mainly hit Celestilla a little bit harder. Still, Celestilla does uh, resist return and it is immune to high horsepower. So some people run Wild Charge to um, nullify the effectiveness of Celestilla as a check to Snorlax. And then others run Crunch so that um, Drift Blim and Miss Magius are not, they don't wall 
Snorlax is both them are ghost types, ghosts are immune to return, and they both, uh, Drifloon's a flying type, and Mr. Magius has levitate, so both of them would also be immune to high horsepower. And you don't want the Pokemon that's supposed to sweep your empire, opponent's entire team not being able to hit something. However, though, they're too niche to put moves on for, and as well, a team should adequately have answers to those and shouldn't rely fully on Snorlax. However, those are some of the other moves that Sonks uses, but once again, Return and High Horsepower are typically the only offensive moves you'll really see on Snorlax. Then we move on to more so, more defensive moves and also setup moves. Setup wise, Snorlax gets a lot to disposal, mainly these three setup moves in Curse, Belly Drum, and Stockpile. Stockpile recently started to see a little bit more usage, especially after it was shown a little bit in the Japan metagame. It started to slowly creep around the world and uh, people start to use Stockpile Belly Drum Snorlax a little bit as a Stockpile is a really nice way of boosting both the Snorlax's uh, defense stats and then just trying to literally tank out any hits even after you Belly Drum. It's typically Belly Drum Snorlax's biggest drawback is that it kind of really relies on having Trick Room up because it's it's berries consumed and now no matter what your opponent's probably going to double into that Pokemon uh, to get damage off because it doesn't want a maxed attack Snorlax trying to go for attacks on it. However, if you do set up stockpiles first, then you can tank out those hits easily and then still get damage off. So stockpiles, stockpile Snorlax is definitely an option that's seen a little bit more usage than we saw previously. And then Sonic also does get, like every other Pokemon, gets access to protect something more so used on Belly Drum Snorlaxes, but definitely still a solid option because Snorlax is a Pokemon that's often doubled into, so you can catch your opponent off guard, and then you can knock out one of their Pokemon with your other Pokemon on the field, and then you're in a solid position because your opponent overly compensated for Snorlax, but who could blame them? So that, those are mainly the move the viable moves for Snorlax mainly oh and recycle almost forgot obviously recycle as well personally I feel like recycle should be on every single Snorlax set but um it's it's not always on every Sonic set but personally that's the way I feel so let's hop right into some viable sets for Snorlax first and foremost we have a figgy bear gluttony Snorlax which has the move pool of return belly drum recycle and protect um, it's also going to have that Figgy Bear and Gluttony, like I just said, and its HP stat is um, its HP EVs are going to be 100, 244 in defense, and then 164 in special defense with a sassy nature. This is going to be your typical, well, this is more of a bulky, sassy Snorlax set. This Snorlax is meant to not be extremely offensive until it has the Belly Drum up. So this one is relying pretty heavily on Belly Drum, considering that there's no EVs in attack. And even though Snorlax does have that 110 attack stat, it's decently underwhelming before setup if there's no investment at all on attack. So, or no, a lot of Snorlax typically run Brave Nature, so not even an attack um, increasing nature. That's going to really hinder the, uh, the offensive output of Snorlax's attacks which is, as a result means you're relying heavily on being able to get Belly Drum up and then trying to sweep that Belly Drum. Uh, personally, really fond of this Snorlax though because it's really able to tank out hits and then go on the offensive, so I like it a lot. We're going to get into another Belly Drum Snorlax, but this one's actually going to be more of a offensive one, so it's not relying heavily on Belly Drum before it goes on offensive. It's going to be I Papa Berry 1, I Papa Fig, Figgy Berry. It doesn't really matter as long as you're not hindering the stat that you're boosting, then you won't get confused, so it doesn't really matter. Still with Gluttony again, of course. This one's actually going to also have high horsepower over Recycle. However, that can easily be changed if you think this is a salt set, but you definitely want a cycle, then that can easily be changed. But this one's mainly trying to work as a solid, solid Snorlax before the Belly Drum. And the other Snorlax really wouldn't without high horsepower. Kind of needs a Belly Drum so that its returns do the maximum amount of damage to things that even resist return. And this one's just trying to be as best of a Snorlax it can be even without the Belly Drum, but then also with the Belly Drum. So this can be an extremely threatening Snorlax, but I feel like this one's better suited for teams that have some really solid support for Snorlax in Arcanine, maybe Aurora Ville, Ninetales, and some other stuff, maybe Drift Blim, Lele going for Burns, just stuff like that, so that Snorlax is able to just uh, tank out hits, well not tank out hits, but 
So it's able to tank out hits a little bit better than it would without those supporting options. Considering that there's not the most investment in anything but attack and then a decent decently good amount in defense, but really not that much in special defense. And even though Snarks has that really high special defense, still really nice to go a little bit more in there considering how many threatening special attackers there are in the VGC 17 meta. Then we get into um, our first curse Snorlax, and this one's going to be rocking out with return high, high horsepower curse and recycle. Uh, so no protect, and curse Snorlaxes typically don't have room on their moveset for protect. So that is something to keep in mind, is they're not really able to run uh, protect. Usually because they need uh, they need both of their coverage options because part of the reason you run curse Snorlax is so that you under speed torque and can hit it hard. And that's what high horsepower allows you to do. So you kind of don't really want to be waiting around and um, not really have the high horsepower to counter the one of the number one, if not one of the most, uh, one of the best trick room setters, trick room abusers in uh, Torkoal. So the EV spread on this one is going to be 68 in HP, 166 in attack, 212 in defense, 108 in special defense, and then um, just uh, Brave Nature, zero IVs in defense. As Snarks wants to be as slow as possible. Let's actually backtrack just a little bit as I did realize I didn't say enough as I wanted to on some of these. Um, this one's going to be a sassy nature with speed down, but do keep in mind that it does have the four IVs in speed so that it can maybe outspeed other Snorlaxes um before before trick room set up because this snorlax isn't fully relying on trick room being up it's just relying on getting the belly drum up so it would love to be able to knock out um an opposing snorlax before it's able to go for any curse or any stuff of that sort so that snorlax is trying to be faster in trick room most of these other ones are trying to be slower however this one's gonna have the full 31 ivs and uh in speed so this one's uh, also not not this one's just trying to hit as hard as possible as well but yeah keep in mind that this one has the zero IVs and uh, speed so it's trying to be as slow as possible completely as slow as possible then last we have another curse Snorlax and this one's just gonna be a little bit more typical with 68 in HP 196 in attack and 244 in defense mainly just trying to make Snorlax much better on that defensive end rather than specially and it's going to be rocking out with a move pool of uh, Return, High Horsepower, Curse, and Recycle, just like the last one. And uh, this one's just meant to be... Uh, this one's just meant to be a little bit more offensive, but not worry too much about your special defense as the other one with the 108 in special defense. More so just worry about tanking hits defensively and then just going on the offensive. So this one's going to be a solid, mainly for like Trick Room and everything as well. Um, this one's pretty much exclusive Trick Room. But still a very solid Snorlax set. Curse quickly boosts your attack stat while also boosting your defense stat and then also making you slower so that you can underspeed things like Gigalith and Torkoal, which in a sense is outspeed if Trick Room gets up. So Torkoal and Gigalith are Pokemon people like to throw on their team to fix their Trick Room matchup. But if you got Curse Snorlax and it's boosted by Curses a decent amount, it's going to pretty much do a, a ton of damage to both of these Pokemon at this point. So definitely a solid Pokemon I have on your team. Next, let's go on to some reliable partners for Snorlax. And these are Pokemon that complement Snorlax well, Snorlax complements them well. So uh, just Pokemon that help Snorlax do its job better. First and foremost is going to be Trick Room Setters, Mimikyu, Porygon 2, Orangaroo. All those Pokemon allow Snorlax to get underneath Trick Room and then it can go for Belly Drum and then it can hit extremely hard or it can go for Curse and hit extremely hard. That is what these po those Pokemon uh, provide for Snorlax with being able to set Trick Room up so reliably. So Snorlax really enjoys uh, really solid Trick Room Setters. Next is going to be Fake Out users because Fake Out users give Snorlax another chance to go for a um, a recycle, another chance to set up m more with one of its setup moves, and another chance to um, just maybe knock out one of your opponent's Pokemon. So fake out uses are extremely solid for Sonics, especially if it's not actually under Trick Room yet. You kind of want to like fake out Kartana and then maybe knock out Kartana before you get under Trick Room, especially if you're not running Protect. So uh, definitely, definitely, definitely some uh, uh, fake out users do uh, definitely help uh, Snorlax. Then the last two uh, best pro reliable partners that I can mainly think of, there's also more, but this is just the main ones, are going to be Arcanine and Tapu Fini. Arcanine because Sonic doesn't have the best defense stat at 65 uh, base, so um, Arcanine really helps sure that up a decent amount with its Intimidate. 
Then Arcanine can support further with the will o -Wiz, especially on slower Pokemon like Mudsdale that want to go for close combat on Snorlax. They underspeed Arcanine, but they outspeed uh, Snorlax, so burning them would be burning a Pokemon like that would be super solid. And then, um, and then Arcanine just can also go for Helping Hand and help Snorlax really knock out something if um, you don't really feel like you're about to get the KO. So Snorlax is extremely, extremely good. Then next we have uh, the best checks to Snorlax, and that's going to be some of these fighting types and a few other things. So let's hop right into it. So some of the best checks to Snorlax are going to be Feromosa, because Feromosa typically has a Fighting MZ, which allows you to... Um, which allows you to do heaps of damage to Snorlax, almost always knock it out. And it allows you to not have to go for Focus Miss, aka Focus Blast, or High Jump Kick, um, because both of those have pretty good chances to miss. So Fighting MZ Fairmost is a solid answer. Snorlax, especially because Snorlax usually doesn't have Protect. And even if it does, not a lot of things want to take a Fighting MZ, so it'd be really hard to to switch into, um, to even switch in into Feramosa at that point. Buzzhole is another fighting type that is viable and runs the Fighting MZ, but uh, Buzzhole is really banking on its special, um, it's really banking on its defense stat, and it really doesn't want to take hits from the special side. So also has to be really careful around things like Tapu Lele, Tapu Koko, really has to find the correct time to come in completely. Then next we have Kartana. Kartana does get access, like I said previously, to Sacred Sword, which is one of the few really solid um, non-fighting uh, stab moves that... It's one of the solid coverage moves that a viable Pokemon gets that's not a fighting type, that is a fighting type move. And um, Kartana uses it well, especially considering that Sacred Sword bypasses those stat, stat boosts. So even if you raise those stats a decent amount with... Uh, with Curse, Kartana can still deal with that. And then next is Salstilla. Salstilla, like I said previously, it resists return and it's immune to high horsepower. So Salstilla could just be really annoying and maybe it could try to stall out a battle if you already got damage on you. Um, it could stall out a battle and just kind of make everything really an annoyance for you. Next we have Mudsdale. Mudsdale is a slightly faster than Snorlax and it is going to have um, close combat. I've even seen Fighting MZ. Uh, Mudsdale a little bit at this point, so definitely we'll have to be aware of Mudsdale. It's solid. Uh, it's a solid Pokemon in general, but then close combat and maybe even fight MZ give it a real nice chance of being able to knock out Snorlax. And then last but definitely not least is Alolan Muk, because Muk's one of the only reliable knockoff users. And if Snorlax gets its berry knocked off, it's just half the person. It is not, or half the Pokemon, half the person. It's half the Pokemon because Snorlax needs that berry to restore its health, get back in a good position, have its health back up, and then start to set up again. But Muck is able to knock that off, and you can't get it back with Recyclops so it's knocked off. So just very difficult to deal with, however. And then last is going to be the rank. At the end of every episode, I will try to give each Pokemon a rank depending on how viable and how good I do think they are at doing what they do, how easily you could slap them on a team and all of that. And uh, Snorlax, I feel like, is a top three switch in. If you have a pretty frail, faster Pokemon and you need to switch uh, something in for an attack, like Snorlax, Cell Still, and Arcanine are your three best answers for that. And uh, that's why I think Snorlax is a very quality switch in. I think Snorlax is one of the best, if not the absolute best, I personally think it's the absolute best um, setup sweeper in the BGC 2017 metagame. So that's another uh, plus towards Snorlax. I think it's a solid, solid trick room check if you are running the, um, if we're running the curse set, then it's a very solid trick room check because then it's able to really even deal with uh, Torkoal. So that's really, really good. And then um, next, Snorlax garners attention. People can't just leave Snorlax there and not pay any attention to it. Snorlax will literally set up and then run through your opponent's team if they don't pay any attention to it. So it's a Pokemon that has to be paid attention to um, for it to um, for it to not just run through teams. And that could be good and bad. Um, it could be good because you protect with your belly jump Snorlax. They got doubled into. Now you're feeling good because you got a free attack off. Or it can sometimes be bad considering you attack and you get doubled into and then you're not doing too too hot after that. Then some of the knocks on Snorlax would be that it almost always requires setup. It's a Pokemon that just requires setup to become the threat that everyone wants it to be. So that's a little unfortunate. It's always a turn used on setting up. Then we have um, 
Then we have that Snorlax also hates losing its berry. That's just not good at all. Really sucks that Snorlax is so reliant on its berry. It's understandable, but it just really sucks because Pokemon like Muck are really good. And just the fact that they can knock off your berry isn't good for anyone. Then um, we have often no protect because Snorlax often can't protect. It literally just cannot protect more often than not because it's not running protect. So that just allows it to get doubled into it, which is never fun. And then it was also a plus, but it's also a minus in the fact that Snorlax is very slow. So that means that it won't be doing a lot, won't be moving a lot. Um, it has to take usually two hits before it can attack. So that's what I meant by not doing a lot. Like it has to take those hits before it can do anything, which is really unfortunate. But um, or at least has to take one hit. You never know what your opponent will go for. But it usually has to take damage before it can attack. And a lot of scenarios that can be worse than it is good. So it's just something to keep in mind. But barring those all in mind, especially the fact that Snorks is a top three sweeper and one of the best, if not the best sweeper in the meta game, I have to still give Snorlax an A. If I was tearing these Pokemon and giving them great stocks, I'd definitely get an A in my book because of um just because of all it brings to a team, how solid of a switch it is. It just does so much. And um, if supported well, you do not want to face this Pokemon. Up again, Snorlax no flinch. just sticking around. Not getting flinched, not getting fully paralyzed. So, so important. Ball doesn't Snorlax. have the damage. It's going to be really difficult. Of course, the hail damage is going to wear down this Garchomp. The toxic poison is going to be doing more and more every single turn. All this Snorlax needs to do is he, just stick around. Paul needs one turn. He needs a paralysis. He needs a flinch. And he needs it now. Yeah, he needs something because this Nine Tails is only going to be able to do damage with Blizzard. If Snorlax is able to keep hitting Recycle, mm -hmm. just eating that berry over and over again, we could see it. We saw how important Snorlax was to Paul. It's oh. going to be big. Of course, the damage increased by the fact That's that he's the rock two targets. There's the Blizzard. Full power Blizzard this time. Ninetales gets it off. Snorlax is able to get the recycle off. Another one gets another another Agua Berry. Eats up that berry. Heals up to 50% health. The toxic ticks down on Garchomp. And Ninetales not going to be enough all by itself. Paul Chua has doesn't have the damage. Australia's gonna sweep! There is the Garchomp with the Toxic Poison. Oh, there Holy. it goes. It's been on the field too long. The hail damage combined with the Toxic enough to do it. And Ninetales clinging what? on with one hit has no way. Unless Snorlax gets caught by full paralysis every single time, Ninetales is going to fall to the Nine big... Ninetales run out of power points. The big Snorlax that could stick in around. Oh, there it is, the facade. Christopher Can of Australia completes the sweep here at our inaugural North America. American International. So that's going to be it for this episode of Pokemon VGC Analysis. I hope you guys did enjoy this one on Snorlax. I definitely wanted to break down Snorlax and just kind of evaluate what makes it so good. I hope for those of you who aren't currently into VGC but want to get into it, this was helpful. Or if you're just still feeling kind of like a beginner and you want a little bit more info, I hope that helps. Or if you're pretty seasoned but you just enjoy videos with information like this or you just could use a little bit more information or brush up on your knowledge, this is the place to be. So once again, hit that subscribe button down below for me guys, if you do end up, um, if you did end up enjoying this video. For now though, I'm gonna get the heck out of here. That was fun. You, I can't wait to use Snorlax at some events before the season gets changed. But um, for now guys, farewell.